Star okay. Trek, the original episodes. These are the conversations between Joseph and Clovis, two brothers, boldly talking about things that have never been talked about before. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> That's the dumbest introduction ever. Here we are. All right, welcome to Star Trek 101. I'm Clovis. And I'm Joseph. And tonight, or today, or right now, we're going to review Mud's Women. It was the third episode produced and the sixth episode aired. Now, normally, I'll go on a big rant about how they should have aired them in production order, but this this one doesn't really matter. This thing didn't seem to flow into any of the other yeah. episodes. It's just kind of... It's a good standalone very, episode. Yep. Could have been whenever. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, quick recap of the episode. Uh, they're chasing down a, a ship because my original thought for our show was to have people go watch the episode and then come back and watch our analysis. But I don't think people are doing that. Of no. The, of the 12 viewers we've had so far. <laughs> I don't think anyone's doing that. So let's just do a recap. Because a lot right. of people are familiar with the show anyway. A little, little recap. Okay. But if you are brand new to Star Trek and you just want to see what the fuss is about, I highly recommend you go watch the episode and then come All back. Right, you're look. supposed to watch the episode first and then listen to the commentary. Then it's going to make sense. If you just watch us, and <laughs> we may be well, entertaining, no. but uh, that's the whole point of learning Star Trek, Star Trek 101. You're going to learn it by watching the episode. Uh, yeah, but so some anyway. people remember the episode, or they've like us, they've seen every episode so many times. And maybe they'll watch this because they kind of re vaguely remember the episode. But then like, yeah, I should go watch the episode again. <laughs> That's anyway, a good point. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever so, we can do to promote the original series of Star Trek. Anyway, right. quick recap. They're chasing down the ship. It doesn't have the proper transcode or whatever they call it. The it's kind of like the space uh, license plate, I guess. Yes, he's uh, driving with a license. Yeah, yeah, Earth ship, that. Mr. Spock? Difficult to say, Captain. We're getting no registration beam from it. If it is... He'll soon overload his engines. So anyway, they say the ship's going to explode. And his engines are superheating. They save the pilot. Turns out to be this flamboyant, aged peacock and his uh, three beautiful women. And then uh, they have some mysterious effect over the, over the crew. They're all like uh, the most beautiful women ever. The crews and com all the male crew members are quite infatuated by them. And they got to figure out what's going on in Muds. Mud ends up. Mud's the mastermind. Yeah, he's being the mastermind. The mastermind. Whatever. And, so anyway, so that's the plot. This episode guest starred Roger C. Carmel, who played Hardcourt Fenton Mud. Yes. And uh, I think, uh, and I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was a pretty well-established actor at this point in history. So they kind of made the whole show about his character. I, I think as a guest star, he played a bigger role than a normal guest star would. The main plot of the story is about Captain Kirk, Harry Mudd, and Eve. Hello. Everyone else is kind of a, a background nice character, yeah. It, it, and I like how the characters are developed again in this one. We get to see everyone. We get to see Spock and McCoy and Scotty and Uhura and Sulu. And they have a new guy, Mr. Farrell, or Lieutenant Farrell. Lieutenant Farrell. Lieutenant Farrell. So I, he was a good side character. I like, I, I like the fact he's going to be on other episodes. Anyway, Harry Mudd really was the star of the show. And uh, the, the women and the drama and all that was kind of secondary. So. And, of course, Mudd played out a trope, what they call the peacock, the agent peacock. Which, which is I sort of this TV trope of a character who's a flamboyant con man. Somewhat effeminate, maybe you can view them as effeminate, but they're flamboyant, you know, over the top, uh, but yet the chess master sort of thing. Okay. Plotting and scheming and getting everything to his advantage. But was that, was, that, was that really him, or was he more of a dumb luck kind of a guy? It seemed to me that Harry Med was just kind of this, he was, he was kind of the epitome of dumb luck. It's not like it was his plan for the Enterprise to blow out its lithium crystals, but he was mm -hmm. opportunistic in the way that, oh, well, this is the situation? Well, I can turn this to my advantage and now I'm gonna be captain of the ship again. <laughs> 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 
What do you think about Captain Kirk in this episode? Captain Kirk kept his cool for the most part. I mean, he, they, the women did have an effect on him, but to a less degree than yeah. everyone else on the ship. Maybe even including Spock. Including Spock. That's what I don't say on this one. It's, it's always passion versus logic. In this episode, it was Captain Kirk who maintained the logic. Uh, rather than Mr. Spock. That one shot of him I thought was just very out of character. Well, well, Spock. Was, well when he's looking at the women. Yeah, yeah when he's looking like at the women, yeah. Giving them the old up and down, you know? Like, this was, you know, what, episode three that produced. So, again, I will say this. Spock wasn't this. completely, totally. He wasn't developed. Developed as a character we know and love today. That's true. I, I think my take on it was this. So, I think in this episode, they made it more like, yeah, he has an on and off switch. Uh, but yeah. then later you see that there's a little bit of conflict in Spock because he's half human, half Vulcan, and he needs to suppress his emotions. Okay. So there's just that one shot of him by the door, and he's like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh look at that, Mr. Kirk." You know, <laughs> he's got that goofy look on his face. Yeah. And he's checking out her butt. When he was, she's he was a minor. He's just they had a very uh, minor role in this thing. Just saying that just that threw me. That yeah. took me out of the episode. I didn't understand it when I saw it as a kid. It's completely out of character for Spock. Oh well, that's fine. I just I didn't I didn't get into it that that seriously. But Spock anyway, Spock hates to see him leave, but he loves to watch. In this him episode, walk away. Spock wasn't the hero. Spock wasn't it. You know, Spock really wasn't much of anything in this he episode. Ruined the so. joke. Anyway, all right, who's next? All right, so I got Captain Kirk. What about Sulu? Well, oh, um, Sulu had that one line I liked. He's like, didn't you see how gorgeous it was? Like, oh, I know. <laughs> I saw her. <laughs> what did you think about Eve's character? Well, that's kind of what threw me about this. That's why I was confused about this episode. Because on the one hand, these three women, oh, we want husbands. That's so. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing, right? I know. But on the other hand, Eve is having this conflict. Like, why are all these? I don't want all these guys leering at me. And just can't do it. I don't care what Harry Mudd says. No, I think you're maybe making it too complicated. I think Eve is a person that wanted to be married and wanted the security and and the beauty of the married life, uh, but she's using Harry Mudd and the drugs to do it, and that's the con that's her conflict. You know, she shouldn't be using Harry Mudd and these drugs to do it. She kind of fell for the charms of Captain Kirk. The, I don't know. She fell for Captain Kirk. He wasn't Kirk. putting on the charm. He was just she, Kirk. She fell, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, she just Watching these again, I, I really do like Captain Kirk. I asked for a free orbital course. You, you get all these oddball actors and characters. Free orbital course locked in, sir. Captain Kirk sometimes is really the voice of reason. The last time I'm giving an order twice, gentlemen. Amidst all the, the silliness that's going on, uh, in, in this episode I saw it when he first confronted uh, Harry Mudd. And Harry Mudd is giving him all these lines. How did I know it was a, a starship following me? You know, you destroyed my ship. You know, da-da-da, he's, he's laying in. And Captain Kirk just says, you know, you're going to, we're going to have a hearing against you and... Uh, uh, you're a liar. I think we understand each other, you know, and his... Mr. Walsh, I'm convening a ship's hearing on your actions. Mr. Spock will supply you with any legal information you may need for your defense. You're a hard-nosed one, Captain. And you're a liar, Mr. Walsh. I think we both understand each other. Security? He maintains the professionalism that's needed uh, in, in this context where everyone else is kind of losing it because they're all gaga over these women. He's the voice of reason. Uh, he's the voice of sanity in, in, a, in a bunch of cuckoo characters. You know, they just, they just they... so anyway. He's a man in command. He is a man he in command. He knows his responsibilities. Yes, he knows where his dedication lies. He knows what the number one goal is, time and time again. They're in the alien situation. They're all messed up, uh, you know. He know he's got the focus, the ship, the crew, the mission. That's what you want in the captain. That's what you want in a lead character. They had so many twists, so many uh, little themes, I guess, that you can put in this one episode, but none of them really went anywhere. 
like uh, she has this love interest with Captain Kirk. You kind of saw that there, but it doesn't really go anywhere. But it, you know, and they just kind of throw it in. Okay. Side note: Harry Mudd's got that line. He's like, "Oh, you're barking up the wrong tree with Captain Kirk." For who, maybe? For Kirk. Find out the ship's captains are already married, girl, to their vessels. You find that out the first time you came between him and the ship. You'll see. All right. So you're a steering. This lady. is what we're gonna do, right? Okay. We're gonna have a scorecard. Okay. To keep a tally, All right. right? Captain Kirk, is it mentioned that he's in love with his ship? It's three for three. I think, yeah. All that's... right. Kirk loses his shirt. Two zero. He doesn't lose his <laughs> shirt in this episode. He's not walking around shirtless. But in the Corbomite maneuver, he's bare chested walking around. And in the pilot, he loses his shirt in the fight. That's what I'm saying. Kirk was obviously a sex symbol throughout <laughs> Star Trek. I just well, I okay. Just, We're not going to rehash this. All right. This whole thing, this whole this whole episode, it had me confused because on the one hand, it seems to be doing kind of a uh, a feminist women's lib perspective, but on the other hand, it still seems pretty sexist because you got all the you know they got all those shots of those guys like. But that's you know what you know what that's an interesting point because. In that time, uh, what they're doing wasn't sexist, you know. It's so funny that it? a good wife was one that cooks and cleans. That is completely sexist in today's, you know, environment for so many people. But in that, you know, the, the, it was like... I well, think that, it was sexist at that time, too. I don't know. But I don't it just think wasn't, so. they weren't talking about it. Okay, well, maybe, you know. You know what? We are unqualified to talk about this subject. We're going to have to bring in an expert. and we're, gonna... we're unqualified. We're just telling our opinions. I'm trying to set up the guest star. Team. All right, fine. Welcome, Tina, everybody. This is our sister, Tina. Hey. Calling in uh, over Zoom to give her expert opinion on Mud's women. Expert opinion. <laughs> so what was your overall opinion of this uh, episode now? It's kind of a mess is what I thought. Well, um, I think the reason you asked me to participate is you're like, how sexist is this one? Pretty and, much. Uh, you couldn't figure it out. When I first watched it, I just was really confused. So I was like, there's a lot going on in this episode, which we chatted about yesterday. But I just rewatched it and it's not good. <laughs> she's hideously ugly because she's not made up like a um, 60s Las Vegas street walker. <laughs> so it's like, because, you know, she just basically has no makeup on. She's ugly. She's hideous. She takes the gummy bear and then suddenly she like, it's like a magical makeup crew came in and fixed her up and she combed her hair, swept sideways and suddenly she's great. So I couldn't tell like how, I think it was attempting to be feminist in some respects, but it just wasn't pulling it off maybe. I wonder like if he wrote that thinking, this will really get everybody thinking. I think this, <laughs> his <laughs> attempt to be feminist is like, it's so of its era. I think it's hard to, maybe he thought it was feminist. I don't know. It's kind of unfortunate all around. <laughs> it's, a lot of, it's entertaining. Okay. We, we should ask you this. So is Captain Kirk sexy in Star Trek? Oh, you know, it's funny watching it now. Like, I always thought, well, he, I always thought he was kind of a buffoonish when I was younger. But I always thought Sulu was a cute, like, really cute. Like, oh, really? <laughs> like, yeah. And then I always thought, I love Spock. Spock was great. Uhura was hot, obviously. Everyone yeah. would say that. Kirk, um, I think as a kid, I'd always just be like, oh, God, he's just blustery, e like, egotistical. You thought kind of gets really angry for no good reason. He yells at people all the time. He's no bluff. anytime you can bluff me, doctor. That was a turn off <laughs> <laughs> for the young <laughs> Tina. And now I can say like, oh, yeah, he's Hollywood good looking. Oh, sure. OK. You know, I could see why people would like, yeah, okay. he's, I, he, you know, he's good looking. Tear that shirt off. Do you <laughs> think it's it's sexist and then not sexist and then sexist and then not? It's one way to put it, like it's it's the uh, the march of feminist progress to take like two one steps step forward back. and one one step back. But no, I think it like it it's trying to be maybe make a couple points, but it's like TV. Yeah, 
TV points. It's not really anything that deep or profound, but yeah, it's it's not. <laughs> it's like think about this. What were you saying about the mail order brides for miners in the 1800s or whatever? Yeah, there were towns where there weren't enough women, like in the Wild West, you know, um, settler era. And then like in during that time, too, they did think of women almost as a commodity because all these men would go to settle the West and then they needed children. They needed a wife. They needed a, yeah, a commodity, but someone like doing a bunch of work for you, you know, and um, bearing you kids kind of thing. And that so that was a hint as like that that really did happen in the past. They were hinting that Harry's going to take them somewhere that there's a shortage of women. So they'll be. So yeah, to... maybe the writing was inspired by that piece of history. Yeah, I'm sure it was. They kind of hinted at that. They yeah. didn't explore it that much. Maybe that was the context for these women having no agency. But then in outer space futurism, wouldn't you think they could just be like, oh, Harry's going to jail. See ya. I'm going. Can you drop me off at Metro? planet that you go to and i'll just you know make my way in the world no i asked another friend of mine about this show so let me let me read you what she had to say eve kind of stands up for what being mad at men for wanting a fantasy kind of feminist but then kirk tricks her into believing she's beautiful super patronizing slash sexist i would agree with that <laughs> so, yeah. So overall, you think it was a, a good episode or? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of funny. It was a little bit depressing to see how, you know, it's actually regressive in outer space in the future, but. Um, <laughs> let's try the out outro again. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks, Tina. Well, yeah. uh, thanks for coming and, and joining us and clearing some things up for us. <laughs> and oh. uh, we'll let you know when the show's on YouTube. Okay. Sweet. And are you supposed to say at the end, like, hit us up on Instagram. If you like this show, send it, make a comment, blah, blah. Oh, blah. do you want to plug anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> you want people to hit you up on Instagram? Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> and also, like, you know, I haven't got my stuff together. No, I don't know. So we're going to talk a little bit about the world building uh first thing i want to talk about is spock's anatomy this yes. is this is the one show that started explaining that spock's anatomy as a vulcan is very different from the human and that plays out in future episodes they have to operate on spark and some of the future and everything which begs the question he's half human you know how does that work you know biologically speaking you know they're 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 humanoid are you He's got the Vulcan as the dominant trait, so his organs get all mixed up. You know, does they get half one way and half the other way? Ever think of that? <laughs> McCoy hates transporters. <laughs> this is the first show where he, he, he makes his comment against transporters, and he just hates transporters, so anyway. You know, it doesn't come out as hate in this episode, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> it lays it's, the ground, it lays the foundation. So, yeah, he doesn't trust this arguments. thing. So. It'll take a long-run battery. Never oh. did trust this thing in the first place. And then I think this was the first magnetic storm as well. <laughs> so we're going to see magnetic storms all throughout Star Trek. And they serve one purpose. Oh, when a ship is, you know, pretty much all-powerful, futuristic, it can scan everything and do everything, but unless, of course, there's a magnetic storm, now they can't do that. It messes with the sensors. Yes, exactly. And sometimes it messes with the transporters. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes it makes an evil duplicate of Kirk. And sometimes it uh, makes the plot go along. <laughs> and sometimes. <laughs> so, all right. And this is the first subspace radio. They have a marriage over oh, subspace radio. Subspace radio <laughs> marriage. I think this was the first mention of subspace. I have no idea what subspace is. It's space, but it's sub. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so my favorite scene was the trial. Yeah. So you got all sitting down. Too. Yeah, mine too. And specifically, the one part where you know the computer versus he's got his hand on uh, he's got his hand on the scanner. Yeah. But he's yeah. like, "What's your name?" Oh, I'm Welshy Welsh boy. And it's like <laughs> incorrect. That's a lie. And I'm like, "Oh well, my name's so and so." Incorrect. That's, so that's awesome. a lie. 
That was classic. And the computer voice, too, was just classic. You want to talk about stereotypes, that was the stereotypical <laughs> computer voice. Incorrect. <laughs> did you now, did, did you know who that was? No, who I don't know. Her? No, who is Nurse that? Chapel is the same woman. That oh, I didn't know that. I know that's good to know. And, that's good to uh, know. Roddenberry's wife. Okay, I didn't know that. You didn't know that either? I didn't know that. No, I didn't know this that. This guy knows nothing about Star Trek. I don't know. I'm just a fan. <laughs> I just like watching it and making comments on it. Um, anyway, so specifically, though, they asked the computer something. He's like, inconclusive, but I can tell you what's going on with everyone else. There's increased heart rates, increased perspiration. No decipherable reading on females. However... Unusual reading on male board members, detecting high respiration patterns, perspiration rates up, heartbeat rapid, blood pressure higher than normal. Boners all around. <laughs> oh, that's sufficient. <laughs> okay, it didn't go quite that far. Um, Strike that from the record, Mr. Spahn. Everyone has an expression towards these women, you know. But the funniest was Leonard McCoy. His just face was just so funny. And just the goofy grin on his face when he's attracted to these women. So anyway, that was my other favorite part of the episode. It's time for the Kirk Fu Review. Not really. This is a Kirk Fu Review on this one. You know what? He tries to break up a fight. He tries. He doesn't use any of his moves. Uh, yeah, he was successful he, he at breaking up that fight. I don't even know that he was successful. I think the other people had to jump in, and they, you know, I know they really did much of anything. So, anyway, it was a very short-lived scene. So he tries to break up the fight, and uh, I think Spock gets involved, and they kind of pull these guys apart. And then uh, Eve has a little bit of a meltdown and runs off into the space storm. Why does he just run a raffle and the loser gets me? Final thoughts. I enjoyed this episode. I, I liked it. It wasn't the best. I don't think it really accomplished what it was trying to do all the way, unless all it was trying to do was feature uh, Harry Mudd. Harry Mudd. The yeah. actor that played that I liked character. it because of Harry Mudd. Uh, and uh, the other themes on sexism and everything, you're right. They just, they just pan out the way they should. It's just kind of a confusing message anyway, I think. So, uh, but overall, I did like the episode. All right, and that about wraps up Mud's Women. What did you think? Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments. Uh, what was the other question I had? Yeah, if, if, we're, if we're too young to know exactly what was going on in 1966, Nobody 67. older than us is going to be watching this. You don't know that. <laughs> Why, there are yeah, people older than us making YouTube videos. Right, I guess that's true. So, yeah, next week is The uh, Enemy Within.